All right, let's talk about the row method. If you've ever run password attacks, like um, rainbow table attacks on Windows XP passwords, or um, uh, attacks on WEP, one thing I noticed is it doesn't try the passwords in a logical order like A, B, C, D. It's, it hashes things over and over and over. It tries a hash and then it rehashes the hash and rehashes the hash. And there's a reason why you do it this way. If you have a hash function like MD5 or anything, you hash like any password to start from, then you hash the hash and hash it again and hash it again. It will go around. Now there will eventually come a point when one of those hashes repeats a previous hash value. And after that, you're stuck on this loop. You will never leave. It will just go around and around and around this loop. And this diagram resembles the Greek letter rho. So this is called the rho method. And this is a way to find hash collisions and to rate how good a hash function is. One of the properties you want of a hash function is that it will have very few collisions. And in principle, if you have a good hash function, you should make it to the square root of the total number of hash values before you hit this loop approximately. This tail should be about the square root of n long, and the loop should be about the square root of n long, where n is the total number of possible hash values. So in here, you just do a bit of these. So here we're going to calculate an MD5 hash in Python. So I'll just uh, exit and come back to clear the screen. And then run Python 3. All right. So I import the hash live, and we've done this before. I'm going to take um, A, encode it as ASCII, and do the hex digest. So it's going to do MD5 of A, the letter A, which is CC17, and so on. And you can check it with an online calculator just to see if it's right. And A does encrypt to CC17 or hash to CC17. Now, if we did MD5 hashes, it would be two to the 64 calculations to get to the tail, and that would take too long. So we're going to truncate it to make it really short, just two hexadecimal characters. So we do it this way. Now I keep just the last two digits, 61. So now I have a real short hash. It's only one byte long. So there's only 256 possible values. So now we can try that hash of a hash of a hash and see the row method. So we run this. All right, imports hash live. It starts with the letter A. Now it's going to do 50 of them. Calculating it is just going to print it. And when you put an end here, instead of putting a carriage return after each one, it's going to put a space after each one. So they'll line up like that. So there you go. Now we can look for where this repeats. And one simple thing to do is just change the width of the window. So I am, it'd be pretty obvious when we hit it. There, I think I saw it happen there where things, EE. -E. Yep, 1E, 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 21, 21, 21. There we are. So here's the, here's the loop going around and around the loop. And it looks like this EE -E is where it started because that's different. So it did this many in the tail, that part. This part here is not repeating. Then this EE created one E and I ended up in a loop. So there's the loop. That's the row method showing the structure of repeated hashes. And there are a few challenges to do here to see that go. This turns out to be quite useful to understand the mathematics of uh, of hash values and finding hash collisions. And if you want something a little more challenging, there is a uh, more complicated project about the row method down here called the Pollard row attack. And that's a uh, fancy one. This attacks the discrete logarithm problem. And I don't think I'll go through it right now, but um, there is another attack down here based on this technique. So it just lets you see some mathematical properties of hash functions. And I'm going to stop this video.